All right, we are now live. Uh, Chris, thank you very much for uh, keynoting um, the first virtual SAFO DEF CON ICS Village. It has been a lot of work. Um, I think it was really great how you set out both, um, I'm sorry, I'm getting some feedback. There we go, sorry. Um, um, how, you, how you set out both the, the way that the strategy has changed, acknowledging how government has to be different, and then extending the hand to the community. And so the first question is, why now? What, what's changed? Hey, uh, thanks. So first off, let me, um, first thanks, thanks to you. Thanks to the ICS Village for having me on. I gotta admit, it is painful watching recordings of your own remarks uh, in, in, in what's I guess now real time. Uh, and we've also made a bit of a studio change. I, um, I look like a hostage in that, in that feed, uh, this is more of a natural setup. You, uh, on the other hand, Bryson, um, you know, we could we could spruce up, I think, your setup there a little bit. So I'll, I'll help you on that front. Uh, I've, got, I've got the important things. I know, I'm jealous, I got it. Hey, I got my uh, aerospace badge the other night, so I'm excited about that. Um, so so what changed? I, I think it's, it's, I don't think any anything necessarily changed overnight. I think it was more of a, uh, an agency coming into its own and trying to figure out, you know, A, what Congress asks us to do and B, the, the, you know, the special authorities and relationships that we've had. We've been in the ICS space um, for years. And if, you know, there, in fact, we had an announcement earlier today. I mentioned the, uh, the, the control systems interagency working group, the private sector co-chair, we announced that just simultaneously. And that's Marty Edwards. Uh, from Tenable. Marty Edwards has obviously been around for quite a long time. In fact, he was an employee of a predecessor organization to CISA uh, running our ICS CERT capability. So we've been here, but again, I think what, what it was more about is a philosophy change here at the agency about being bridge builders, about connecting the dots. And that's in part, I think, just kind of my style, my, my um, uh, you know, the way I always operate. I'm a middle child always seeking to build people, you know, bridges, relationships, compromises, and not being adversarial. And I think this is a, this is a community that, that kind of, I think, shares that mentality and approach and is just looking for that hand for the pull up. Um, so again, I think we've got, we got a number of different things that we're trying to do here. And, and one of the big takeaways that, that I had uh, from the speech is democratizing security in the control system space. The, the gap between the haves and the have nots is pretty remarkable. So what I'm looking to do is not just make sure that the, the bigs are in into the, the party, but the fact that we can roll out in the rural communities and water sector, uh, water facilities, the 30,000 plus water treatment facilities across the country and make sure that they have access to training resources and capabilities. Not trying to take anything over here. They're still gonna be responsible for their security, but whatever we can do. So we've got a couple concepts between the control uh, environment lab, resource the seller capability, but also looking to put some some people on wheels moving around the country and, and you know, again, bringing that uh, last mile delivery on ICS training. Yeah, so I, I appreciate the, the, the kudos um, to, to me and to several others. Um, certainly with the village, it's a, a team sport. Um, I couldn't do it without um, Tom Van Norman, who has done a, the lion's share of the CTF work, including integrating CISA into that along with all the volunteers we have and all of the, the legends that we, we follow on from before. Um, and so with that, opening the aperture for team and democracy, how can small and mid-sized businesses get more involved with these efforts? The CISA calls during COVID have been a fantastic resource for situational awareness. How can people get more involved in the R&D to bridge the gaps? Yeah, so a few things here. First is, um, I, first, I, I like hearing that the calls that we do during COVID, just so everybody's tracking Tuesday, Thursdays for uh, the first, I don't know, 15 months of COVID, however long it was, six or seven months, we did Tuesday, Wednesday calls, broad stakeholders open, or average in about anywhere, you know, the, high, the highest number, I think we had about 10,000 connections. Um, and that's winnowed down over time. Now we're, we're at every other week. Um, but the idea there is to make sure that we can bring a set of resources, um, educational information sharing, technical guidance to the broader community. Um, and that's not just us, but it's CDC, HHS, FEMA, anyone else. 
And we've done that for other events too. If you recall back at the beginning of the year with Iran, uh, we did a couple calls there as well. Um, the first uh, evening call we had, you know, 6,000 plus folks on a Friday afternoon, Friday, Friday, 6 p.m. call Eastern. And, and to me, again, it's, hey, here's what's going on in the world. Here is a, the background on the Iranian actors. Here are the things that, that we're worried about and you should probably be worried about and covering down on over the weekend. Yeah, sorry to do this to you over a weekend, but that's just kind of how life is right now. So again, the idea is to be able to quickly engage. We've built partnership me mechanisms and distribution mechanisms uh, over the years. We got tens of thousands of partners in these programs, but that's not nearly enough. Uh, we have a lot of room left to cover or ground left to cover in terms of bringing people in. So we'll continue doing these. Um, uh, we'll continue doing those calls. We're going to continue to do things like the ICS JWG, which is open to everybody. It's free of charge. It's virtual now. So there's really no barrier to entry uh, since it's streaming online. If you got a connection to the internet, you should be able to tap in. We also have our cybersecurity summit, our third annual cybersecurity summit later this year which is also going to be in you know, safe mode, uh, which is going to be about two to three hours of programming uh, once a week on a, I think it's on a Wednesday. Uh, and so what's the first day there? September. I'll come back around on that. But uh, it's going to be four weeks in a row every Wednesday, two to three hours of programming. Again, free of charge. We're going to be streaming it uh, on the sysa.gov website. Um, and so lots of, lots of opportunity. And from there, what we've got to do a better job of is is communicating the the specific almost the equivalent of an api on how you hook in just a week or two ago we, we released the cisa service catalog which is an uh, interactive tool uh, so that you can kind of pick and choose sort through the things that we provide again training education guidance best practices so so that an organization of any stripe or capability uh can plug in and and that'll you know get you into some of the other things we can do like uh, have a have a, uh, a uh, protective security advisor, cybersecurity advisor, uh, sit down with you and walk you through a good plan. Do you have any suggestions for how CISA can help push for critical infrastructure software updates? Where the current model of CVE vulnerability reporting and tools like OWASP scans do not show a problem in old deprecated software platforms and tools. This would help open up the budget and get prioritization escalated. Yeah, so I mean, this when this is some of the initial feedback we got through the cross sector interagency working group. Um, one issue was was standards help uh, improve um, government input and engagement on standards bodies, uh, but that doesn't really help uh, for stuff that's already deployed uh, the legacy systems. And in part, that's what we're trying to do through pillar two of our ICS strategy. Again, I, I made the point in my remarks of, you know, nobody wants, nobody's here to hear about a strategy. They want to hear about the things that we can do. And that's what we're trying to build toward is collaborate with the community to the extent we can do joint research, joint investment um, to get that defend today aspect of our mission space. Uh, so to get the tools out there, the visibility out there, transparency out there. Um, on, on currently deployed and then help to the extent possible uh, transition over into more secure by design, secure by uh, uh, deployment technologies. But this is the real challenge because some of the stuff's hard to get to. Uh, you can't take the plant floor offline uh, to do a swap out. Um, so we've got to continue thinking through what, are, what some of the, the alternative options are. So as a two-year-old agency, you noted how, how young CISA is. How is the process of recruiting ICS talent going? And can you discuss what you are doing or plan to do to grow future talent? Yeah, um, this is tricky, right? Um, ICS talent is, is a unicorn out there right now. Uh, IT, oh, wait, oh, there it is. Yeah, is that new? I haven't seen the, uh, the dark unicorn version. Yeah, this is, uh, this is new. Okay, nice. It's the, the <laughs> Bryson seven months into COVID. <laughs> um, so I, it, it it's tricky, right? Um, we are able to attract talent right now on a onesie twosie basis, uh, in, but that's not going to cut it. Our requirements are pretty dramatic, uh, but but it's also not about getting the 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 people and the boots on the ground here. So first off, I have a philosophy. 
I want to be able to bring in as much talent as possible, but I'm okay if after four or five years or three years or whatever it is, they spin out in the private sector. For me, it does a few things. One, it gets us, it, it allows us to have an alumni network of folks that know how we work, the things we do. And then once they spin out into the private sector, into the vendor community or the deployed community, uh, they know how to work with us and they have an affinity uh, and, and predisposition to work with us. Second, it allows us to uh, provide training. So we're providing a lot of this training anyway, but if we do it here in house, then we know that there's some degree of bar met or standardization and in, in training uh, for ICS security. Now, that's all well and good. You got to identify the talent as it comes up through. So we are working with uh, colleges, universities, with uh, various veterans programs to bring folks in. Uh, and in some cases, we can pay for uh, tuition, uh, scholarship for service is one program. Uh, but again, that assumes that at least that part assumes that people are going into the traditional education paths. And we are committed to uh, a diverse and inclusive approach to uh, bringing folks into uh, the government and, and particularly this agency. So we're working with Congress. They've, they've provided us some funding to set up a program that'll look more a trade school or an institute uh, like approach. So it's not a necessarily a four year college, but maybe two years. Um, and that'll, I think, get us into an entirely different uh, uh, population of potential employees, uh, but more importantly, get more capability and training out there uh, at the edge rather than just thinking through the standard, um, you know, four-year college and, and university approach. So I know our time is almost but again, up. Oh, sorry. I don't think it's up. To, yeah, right there. Look, we're hiring all the time. So sysa.gov slash careers. Check it out. And also for any of our ICS resources, cisa.gov slash ICS. I realize the glare is probably bad. We'll fix that for the next one. Uh, but, but we are always hiring. We are a steady employment machine, not just here in the national capital region, but throughout this great country. So um, I just figured you've been writing your password back up there. So it'd be a, a typical OPSEC fun fail. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> yeah. The same uh, combination I have on my luggage. Uh, three rapid fire questions to close it out, because um, I know you're out of time, is you get to wave a non-internet connected magic wand. What is that one wish that you wish could happen? And then the final two questions is, next year in non-internet connected magic wand is a crystal ball. What is one good thing and one bad thing that you think is gonna happen in critical infrastructure in the next five years? Yeah, so uh, one thing that we've heard pretty clearly from across the community uh, is a need for some sort of, uh, you know, Rosetta Stone of protocols within various ICS uh, technology and equipment. So anything we can do on that front to enumerate all the protocols and have it just that much easier for the security uh, the, and safety folks to understand what they're dealing with and be able to make good informed decision. So that's on the list. Um, what's a good thing that's coming? I think we're going to have a much better, uh, in part through things like ICS for ICS and part through things like updating CVSS uh, and the, 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 the distilling down commonalities across vulnerabilities in various deployments. Um, again, have a more informed uh, risk-based approach to uh, decision-making. Uh, on the bad side, you know, look, the more stuff that's getting plugged in, the more stuff that's getting remotely monitored, it is just additional attack surface. There will be bad moments. Um, it's not always going to be cyber, uh, but, it, but there very likely will be cyber because we know the adversary is, uh, is taking a hard, hard look between China, I Iran, and Russia. So uh, we're just hoping that we can, you know, through whether it's... Um, Layer defense or just risk management and consequence management keep the boom small and keep the loss of life to zero. Chris, thank you for your time. Pleasure as always. Um, we look forward to hey. uh, continued collaboration. Thanks, Bryson. Hey, stay safe, wear a mask. Thanks, folks.